Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Theo. If you're not familiar with the world of audio, then the big news as of late is the release of lossless sound quality on Apple Music. And I myself was pretty hyped about this. I remember downloading a bunch of my favorite songs in lossless the moment it hit. But let's be honest, how many of us can actually tell the difference between lossy and lossless audio? There are a lot of people out there who claim they can hear a night and day difference, so I decided to put myself to the test, and I ran a few ABX tests, which, let me tell you, a lot of audiophiles don't like doing. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the results as well as giving some commentary on whether I think the difference between the two is worth it. Okay, so as for my testing train, I was using the Lossonado ABX tester on my M1 MacBook Air, then I ran that through the Apple USB-C dongle, and then my 64 Audio U12Ts. Before someone says that the chain is being bottlenecked by the USB-C dongle, I do want to note that objectively this dongle measures pretty well, and subjectively I would say it's better than a lot of other uh, sources that I've heard. I think it's also only fair to consider the availability of the equipment that I am using. Um, plenty of people will have access to a USB-C Apple dongle, but not a lot of people are going to have access to $2,000 IMs to take a test like this. So yeah, just putting it out there. Okay, so I'm probably just going to slap some gameplay content on the screen because I'm lazy and feel like doing a voiceover. Now the first test that I ran was a 128 kilobits per second MP3 versus lossless flag. I got 9 out of 10 on this test, which basically translates to a p-value of 1%. Definitely significant, and I think most normal people would be able to tell the difference in quality here, even if I personally didn't think it was a huge difference in the grand scheme of things. Now using the same track, I tested between 320 kilobits mp3 versus lossless flak. The jump in difficulty here is actually quite substantial. I failed the second test for this with a 6 out of 10, and what I'm showing here is the third one. You can see that the confidence is only 83%, so this isn't even statistically significant technically. I think I should also note what I am looking for in this track. I am listening for about a minute into the song when it suddenly explodes into loudness. So here I'm basically exploiting the fact that lossless audio has more dynamic range than mp3. But even knowing what to look for, you can see that I'm only doing slightly better than guessing. Here's another test I did using another track, again testing between lossy 320 and flak. I am very familiar with this track, and I have run, I want to say, several hundred ABX trials on it at this point. Even then, I'm only pulling an 8 out of 10 here. This is also the track that I used for the rest of my testing, because the spot I was looking for was right in the beginning. It sucks, but aural memory fails very quickly. If you're having to scrub through to a certain point while AB'ing, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to forget what you just heard, even like 5 seconds ago. As for how I actually passed this test, here I was listening for the cadence of the opening note. It sounds ever so slightly softer on the flak file, and more upwards compressed, maybe chalky might be a more apt descriptor on the 320 file. Now here's where things get interesting. I decided to test lossless flak in 16-bit versus lossless flak in 24-bit, which is essentially master quality. Here I want to point out that theoretically you should not hear a difference between these two unless you have a track with insane dynamic range and you're listening at deafening levels. And just to be clear, what I have here is not a track with good dynamic range. In fact, I want to say that this is like a 4 on the DR meter. Yet I really do think these tracks sound different. The 16-bit sounds softer than the 24-bit in the opening notes which is surprising given that 24-bit should have more dynamic range. So you can see that I pulled 90% confidence here, which is not statistically significant, but hey, it is something. I was pretty surprised by the results, so I hit up some buddies on Discord, and they mentioned that the master, the 24-bit, might be different. To try and mitigate this, if this was the case, I took only the lossless 24-bit file, and then I converted it to 24-bit and 16-bit wave in Audacity. You can see from the results that the confidence level actually went up to significant levels. There's still some insane chance that I'm getting incredibly lucky here, but I do think I was discerning a difference. I had some friends check the files, and they told me that they were all sonically identical. All four of them. Like, they ran spectrograms and stuff, and it all checked out. Now whether I'm hearing that difference because something's wrong with my chain, I am not sure. For example, I thought that my Mac or the Apple dongle might be downsampling, so I ran two more tests. On one test, I ran my U12T straight out of the headphone jack, just to eliminate the chance that the dongle was screwing things up. I still got similar results. In fact, I ran even more trials this time and still pulled a 95% confidence level. Then for the second test, I set the Apple dongle to 24-bit 44.1 kHz and ran the test again. You can see I pushed it to 98% confidence in this test. Something that I want to point out is that you will generally see me miss quite a few in the beginning. I think it takes me a while to acclimate and find my rhythm. By the time I'm at 40 or 50 trials in, I'm generally doing quite a bit better. There was another one I did too with a web conversion from the 24-bit flak to a 16-bit flak, and I managed to get 9 out of 10 comparing the two, which is definitely significant. 
I'm not going to trust that one as much because I used some random online converter, but I'll link all of the files in the description too, so you can play around with them if you'd like. I know there will be people who will say that what I did is impossible, and hey, I'm inclined to agree. But the results speak for themselves, and there's a very good chance that I did hear a difference. As for how I was able to discern between the files, my best guess is that there's still something in my chain that's screwing up and letting me hear a teeny tiny difference. That, or maybe there really is a difference. Who knows? Anecdotally, I will say that I do hear the same difference on my iBasso DX300, which I know can play these files, but obviously anyone can say that. Plus, given how small the differences are, that's easily chalked up to placebo. Anyways, I just thought that was interesting, and along these lines, quite frankly, I'm not too invested in the whole lossy versus lossless thing. Sure, I managed to pass all these tests, but it's mainly for bragging rights. Once you get up to lossy 320, the differences are so insignificant that the vast majority of people are just not going to care. What I also haven't shown you is just how difficult taking these tests are and how many I failed. It's a real mental game. I would hit rhythms where I just knew which was which, and then a couple of minutes later, I couldn't tell you to save my life. If you break concentration, even momentarily, you might as well go back to guessing. Something that makes it even more difficult is that if you're listening for dynamic range, so loudness like I was, your ears are going to reset each time you take a pause. So when you play track A first to check, even if it's the lossless flack, which should be quieter on a quiet part, it's going to sound louder, and track B will sound quieter even if it's lossy, because your ears have just recalibrated. So you have to keep going back and forth to recalibrate your ears each time you reset. Sometimes, when I hit rhythms, I would just stop referencing track A and B entirely, and go off of gut instinct, which seemed to work better. There's also the fact that these are cherry-picked tracks that I've heard hundreds of times. There's no way I could do this using random tracks someone was testing me with on the spot, or at least not without knowing what to look for. What I'm trying to say is that if you think you can discern a night and day difference between lossy and lossless, or maybe even 16-bit versus 24-bit flack, then I would highly encourage you to try an ABX test. As much as we don't like taking tests, an ABX test keeps us honest. I think you'll find out pretty quickly that either one, you can't tell the difference, or two, the differences are teeny tiny. Highly unlikely, of course, there's option three. Maybe you have golden ears, you still hear a huge difference, and you pass. I still think you'd be splitting hairs with most folks over that last one. So what's the takeaway here? Does lossless audio just not matter? Well, I'm not exactly an expert on the subject, but I do know that it has archiving purposes because it can basically be converted into any other file type. And also, if you're a mastering engineer, I believe it's also quite useful. But if you're an average consumer, I think it's more so a case of FOMO, and that's exactly what it is for me. I just don't want to know that I'm getting something inferior when I could potentially have something better. And think about it this way. If lossless audio sounds better to me, even if I'm just getting off of the juicy placebo effect, well, subjectively, it does sound better to me, and I'm benefiting from it. And that sort of ties into the whole enjoying the music thing, as much of a cliche as it is. If you're running A-B tests like this trying to discern a difference, I can tell you that it's going to get boring very quick. You're just looking for very specific things, and half the time you're not even sure if you're hearing them exactly. Um, it just saps the fun out of everything, and I almost had to turn it into like a, a sort of game with myself, like I was sort of gacha gambling almost, to keep myself going. Basically, I think most people would be just fine with a lossy mp3, but it's not going to stop me personally from using FLAC anytime soon, just because, again, FOMO. But yeah, I think I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it was informative, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.